Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. My name is Basil and this video is all about DSLRs, mirrorless cameras and the top 10 differences between both of them. Got a Nikon D 7500 in my left. Check out the review on the channel if you haven't already and a Canon M6. Now the first difference is super obvious, size and weight. This is a beefcake as you can see and this just fits really snugly in one hand. This is going to affect the accessories, you get everything and more to the point when you're actually going to use it because this won't fit in a small handbag, this will. So size and weight is definitely the first key consideration. Next up, it's lenses. DSLRs generally have way more lenses and that's gonna give you more versatility when you're shooting and take you up to a much higher end. When you're looking at something like the Canon M6, for example, it has a handful of lenses, though most compact system or mirrorless cameras will give you options to use lenses from DSLRs with an adapter. Another key difference is the viewfinder around the back. This has an optical viewfinder. So you're looking in, then it's getting reflected kind of like a periscope down to a mirror and then the image is going through the lens and that's pretty much the best. You get really, really great, well, live view as it were. It's completely optical. Some compact system cameras have a digital viewfinder which sits there. Some just have the screen and you do have some advantages like a flip out screen on some compact system cameras, but many traditional photographers are gonna be preferring DSLRs with their optical viewfinders. Next, it's autofocus, and this is a tricky one. because if you're thinking about video, actually the mirrorless cameras tend to be a little bit better when they're in live view. That's when you can see the image on the back. But when you're looking through the viewfinder, when it comes to photographs, the autofocus is just that bit faster on DSLRs. As for continuous shooting, every time you take a shot with a DSLR, the mirror has to flip up and down. That's really, really labor intensive by comparison to just firing up a shot. So while DSLRs used to reign supreme when it came to frames per second in burst modes, now the compact system cameras win out. DSLRs really did make people who had photography equipment really take note of the amazing video that they could produce. But actually the compact system cameras are leapfrogging DSLRs in that respect, specifically by introducing things like 4K video that bit earlier. In live view all the time, autofocus in video is great and the compact nature means versatility is really good too. So, so long as you've got the right ports, HDMI out and an audio connection, you should be good to go. When it comes to key features, these are actually pretty neck and neck. They can all shoot RAW, they can all shoot JPEG at various qualities, all shoot at least full HD video, 60 frames per second, some can shoot 4K. You've also got similar manual controls with regards to the wheels. So you've got a wheel at the front of this which controls shutter speed, another wheel around the back which controls aperture, another wheel around the back which controls ISO and it's very very similar with your big DSLR. So it really is going to come down to each individual model so you'll want to have a look before you pick it up. Now on to what really matters, image quality. And this can actually be more similar than you might think. While a lot of compact system cameras do use smaller, physically smaller sensors than their DSLR counterparts, a camera like this, the M6, uses exactly the same APS-C sized crop sensor, which is really, really cool. So if you do have one of the Panasonics, for example, that costs around three, 400 pounds, you're not gonna get as good results as a three, 400 pound DSLR. But if you get something with a nice big sensor like this, you will be laughing. That said, if you go into the higher ends of DSLRs like this Nikon D7500, you'll probably be outdoing the competition, particularly when it comes to low light photography. Now we talked about size initially, and this really does affect battery life. Why? Well, based on how big these devices are, that dictates how big the battery that we can squeeze inside them is. And as a result, DSLRs tend to have better battery life than their mirrorless compact system camera counterparts. Also, you can see around the back, we've got a nice big screen on here, and that's gonna suck up a lot of battery life. Whereas a viewfinder, which is optical, requiring no power, won't. The final factor is price. DSLRs are gonna start around the same price as mirrorless cameras, but they're gonna go way higher. So if you're thinking about becoming a professional or you are a professional, then you probably have a primary DSLR and a secondary mirrorless camera as your backup option. If on the other hand, you're looking to spend around 500 pounds on a really decent camera, an additional 200 pounds on a lens to go with it, then you may well get more out of your mirrorless camera than DSLR, so long as you're okay with the idea of having no optical viewfinder. Hopefully you found this top 10 differences between DSLRs and mirrorless cameras useful. Thanks for watching TechRadar.